Welcome to the HP AI Essentials Data Pipeline Technical Demo. I'm Randy Thomason, and I'll be walking you through some of the data management services provided by HP AI Essentials. But before we dive into today's demonstration, let's take a moment to recap where things are at with AI and its challenges. The AI revolution is disrupting every industry, from retail to financial services to healthcare. Emerging AI technology is rapidly revising and changing the co corporate landscape. And companies are struggling to stay on top of the wave and to realize returns on their AI investments. Yes, the potential rewards of AI are huge, but so are the challenges, with only about one in 10 pilot projects actually making it to production. The challenges are everywhere. AI is all about models and data, but which model and how do I manage the model lifecycle as well as the mountain of data needed by my AI solutions? Then there's the tools. Tools that are often expensive to operate, complex to integrate, and difficult to maintain. And how do I manage the ever-growing set of tools throughout their life cycle? And once I have a handle on the models, tools, and data involved, how do I make them scale so that I'm in a position to handle explosive user growth as well as new use cases? And as I scale my AI investment over time, how do I manage the cost so that my investment's predictable and sustainable over the long term? Because at the end of the day, it's all about faster time to value and having the freedom to support rapidly emerging business needs. There are lots of challenges and enterprises are looking for solutions. Solutions that are simpler to operate and maintain while providing faster time to value. Solutions that scale with growing needs and a changing set of technologies. Solutions that provide enterprise-grade security that is built in and not just bolted on as an afterthought. And finally, solutions that have predictable cost so that companies can effectively manage their AI investments. HPE's Private Cloud AI is designed to meet these challenges. HPE Private Cloud AI, a part of the NVIDIA AI Computing by HP portfolio, is a turnkey, scalable, AI-optimized private cloud designed to accelerate AI adoption while keeping enterprise data under management. It combines NVIDIA accelerated computing, networking, and software with HPE's high-performance compute, storage, and the HPE GreenLake Cloud, together with curated services for ML ops, data pipelines, orchestration, and processing. Today's demonstration is going to focus on the AI Software and Data Foundation. This middle layer of the HPE Private Cloud AI Software Stack provides the key platform, security, data analytics, and machine learning services needed to create, deploy, and manage AI solutions at scale. Now let's take a look at how data engineers can use HP AI Essentials in their day-to-day -day work. Data engineers spend a lot of time wrangling data, that is when they're not wrestling infrastructure, and HP AI Essentials makes it easier to ingest, process, and visualize data. The scenario we'll walk through today is a typical day in the life of a data engineer using Apache Airflow and Apache Spark to construct a data pipeline for processing data in HPE AI Essentials. First, we're gonna navigate off to the left to the Data Engineering Tool screen by selecting the Tools and Framework from the left menu, then selecting the Data Engineering tab. This displays the palette of data engineering tools currently deployed in the platform. Out of the box, AI Essentials provides a rich set of tools, including Apache Airflow, which is a popular open source tool for authoring, scheduling, and monitoring and managing data pipelines. Easy Presto, which is an HPE customized version of the Presto DB, which is a distributed SQL query engine for dealing with heterogeneous large uh, data sets at scale. 
and then also Apache Superset, which is a tool for data exploration and data visualization that's able to handle data at petabyte scale. In addition to the data engineering tool palette, there's also a rich set of data analytics tools. These tools include Apache Livy, which is a RESTful interface for interacting with Spark clusters, Spark History Server, which is a web UI for drilling down into completed and running Spark applications, and the Spark Operator, which is a Kubernetes operator that simplifies the deployment and management of Spark applications running inside of HP AI Essentials. AI Essentials also includes a Spark Applications UI that allows me to edit and manage my Spark applications. Okay, now we're ready to construct our pipeline in Airflow. So I'm gonna go and open the Airflow UI, which brings us to the default screen, which lists the set of directed acyclic graphs or DAGs that Airflow has available to it. You'll notice on this screen that it provides a variety of different statuses, you know, whether a DAG is active, whether it's been paused, the number of DAGs that are currently running, as well as failed executions. Each DAG provides a set of metrics or information about the management of that particular pipeline, as well as the ability to trigger its execution, to reparse it, make sure that there's no you know, errors in the code, and then delete it if desired. We're just gonna select our particular pipeline, which reads comma delimited data or a CSV data from an S3 bucket and then writes it out to a parquet file. So I select my DAG, my pipeline. That brings us to the DAG detail screen, which provides a default view of metrics around this particular pipeline, as well as the ability to graph its execution, code, event log, run duration, and so forth. We're just going to look at the code real quickly. And you can see that this is a fairly straightforward pipeline. I've got a set of environment parameters that guide the execution, including an export path. This is where it's going to write the parquet file. The S3 endpoint, this is where we're going to get the comma delimited, comma delimited data from. And then the actual task involved in this pipeline. And in this case, there's a single task, which is to have the Spark Kubernetes operator kick off our Spark job, which will read the data in, process it, and then write out a Parquet file. So once I'm ready to go and execute and run my pipeline, I can just click the trigger or the play button up here in the top right, and that will launch the execution. Now what I'll see next is a detail screen that allows me to override those set of parameters provided for the pipeline so that I can substitute new values if the ones that were coded as a part of the pipeline definition are no longer appropriate. In this case, these are all fine, so I'm just going to launch the execution of the pipeline. You'll notice here now that on the histogram, the graph to our left, I've got a new execution that shows that my pipeline is running. This particular pipeline will take a, a couple of minutes to, to run, and we won't spend the time waiting to look at that, but I've got a series of runs that I've already executed. So we're going to take a look at those in our other Spark UI tools to inspect the results of our Spark job. So first up is the UI for the Spark applications. That I can access from the Analytics tab by clicking Open on the Spark Operator. This opens the list of Spark applications that have run and are currently running. You'll notice that the one that we just launched has a pending submission and that there are a set of completed runs as well. There was also a tab showing any scheduled applications, and in this case, we don't have any scheduled to execute at this point. If I want to inspect or drill down into a particular Spark application, I just click on the application, go out to the right, and from here I can view the details of the application I can view the YAML that defines the Spark application, edit the YAML, look at the application logs, edit or delete the application itself. We're just going to look at the logs real briefly. This pulls in the logs, right, from the Spark driver and allows me to view it in an in a easy to access spot instead of having to drop out to a command line and, and pull the logs from Kubernetes. Just close that out. 
I can also choose to view the YAML. This is the actual definition of the Spark application itself. If I needed to tweak something, say like a resource definition to rerun it, I could also edit that YAML from this spot and then I'd be good to go. Another tool that we provide for dealing with Spark applications is the Spark History Server, also accessed from the Analytics palette. Just click Open on the Spark History Server, and here's a set of Spark applications that have finished execution. Note that the applications that are listed here includes applications for all users. However, if I'm an AI user within HPE AI Essentials, I'm limited to interacting with the Spark applications that I myself launched. So we'll just pick one that we've executed. And here again, the detail screen provides me a variety of information about the execution and the associated metrics, the number of stages, what was successful. If I want to drill down further, you know, I could pick up those particular stages and it would give me details about the execution. Once I've looked through the Spark applications and satisfied my curiosity and looked through the logs and done anything that I needed to do with the Spark application, I'm ready to actually work with the resulting data. To do that, I'm going to go and open up my, net, my notebook. It's worth noting that AI Essentials provides out of the box a notebook configured for each user. This notebook is already pre-configured with both private and shared storage. And because it's built on top of Qflow notebooks, um, it effectively manages compute resources. So for example, if I'm working on a team and I've got uh, several GPUs tied up with a, a large notebook, someone needs to get a patch on a model pushed to production, I could come in and stop my notebook, which would turn loose of the GPUs and the CPUs that I'm using without actually deleting my notebook. So I can come back later, just resume, play it again and pick up where I left off. So now we'll go over to my notebook. And my notebook provides a series of instructions that allow me to visualize and work with the data. And of course, the notebook could contain anything that you want. The data that I've got in particular in the Parquet file is a summary of some of the New York uh, and Dow Jones Industrial Stock Exchange information. I can just execute a cell to get the summary table or to plot it. And again, the effort of being able to configure the necessary secret to read the, the Spark data configuring and mapping the storage, making sure that authentication happens between you know, my notebook and any other associated data sets. All of this is handled for me by AI Essentials. So that what I need to do is simply to kick off my pipe, build my pipeline, kick off its execution, inspect the applications in the Spark UIs if, if I want to, and then I'm ready to work with the data in my notebook. And there you have it. The AI revolution is one that is continuing to change the face of business. And today's data engineers are often struggling to keep pace with just the huge volumes of data that have to be dealt with to satisfy the demands of AI models. And they need a rich set of tools that are robust, but also approachable in order to keep up with this demand. And HPE AI Essential, which is a part of the HPE Private Cloud AI, provides this set of tools and services that makes data management easier without having to spend as much time dealing with the infrastructure. This concludes today's demonstration on HPE AI Essentials. I want to thank you for your time and encourage you to reach out if you have any questions or comments. And also take a look at our websites on both the NVIDIA AI Computing by HPE portfolio as well as HPE Private Cloud AI. Thank you.